21 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts. And remove the wheel. I want to remove this pinch bolt next. Mine is uh, pretty seized up in there, so trying to put an air gun on the bolt side is not going to do anything. So I want to break free the nut side. I'm going to use a 22 millimeter wrench. If you have a uh, ratchet that's shallow enough to get in there, then use it. But mine is too long and it will hit this part of the knuckle. So I have to use a wrench and break this free. All right, so I have this nut loose. I'm going to leave it on just a few threads for now. And I'm going to try and break free this bolt with a 17 millimeter socket. It's most likely pretty seized in there. I got it spinning a little bit. I'm going to work it back and forth and spray some rust penetrant. Hopefully that'll help it come out a little easier. Spray it right in between the two uh, halves of the knuckle here. And try to work it in. If you need to use heat because yours is even more seized than this, then Go ahead, heat it up. Just don't make it too hot because that does weaken the metal. Let's see if I can spin it out some more with this. All right, that seems to have freed up. Now remove the nut and let's drive out the bolt. I'm going to put my socket back on it. I'm going to try and spin this bolt while I push on it from this side. All right, this point, now that it came out that much, now I can grab a wrench, continue spinning it out, and the bolt should come right out. Now I'm going to take a pry bar, stick it right in between the, uh, where the, the slot is in the knuckle, and I'm going to try to hammer it in. Hopefully that'll spread out these two pieces so I can push the ball joint out. Okay, that's as far in as it'll go. Now with a very large pry bar, I'm going to try to pry down on the control arm, up on the knuckle at the same time. Hopefully that'll pop the ball joint out. If not, we'll have to use something different. I'm gonna use a smaller pry bar and hold pressure down, but also hammer at the same time. go. All right, that's out. There's a 19 millimeter bolt that holds the front part of this control arm. I'm going to try and break this free by hand. All right, at this point I can probably get it with the air gun since it's not as tight anymore. Perfect. You can see that I already sprayed it with rust penetrant. Now at the back of the control arm you have two 19 millimeter bolts, so let's remove both of those. There's the second one, and the front bolt is still on, and I left that on on purpose, otherwise this would want to fall off. Now once you have it out of the front, you can turn it and twist it a little bit, free up the rear bushing, and here is your front lower control arm. To replace this ball joint, I'm going to have to take the snap ring out, so use some snap ring pliers and expand the two ears. And I'm going to use a little pry bar just to help it come up and over the lip. Looks like the boot comes with it, so that's okay. All right, take that out. So for this, you can use a ball joint press. That'll be the easiest. Put a cup that fits underneath, but it has to fit um, inside of this control arm, but around the ball joint. Obviously, you don't want to be pressing on the ball joint as you're trying to press it out. So make sure it fits around the ball joint, but inside of this control arm so that it sits flat. Now install your ball joint press. Make sure everything is lined up. Usually, um, I like to cut the stud right at the base. That way, nothing can move and bend as I'm pressing this out. But this stud is actually pretty stiff still, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, usually, when they're all floppy, I just cut it. That way, the press has a nice flat surface to press up against. 
And at this point, now that the snap ring is out, there is nothing holding in this ball joint other than just the pressure of it being pressed in. So I'm gonna tighten this rod here. That's gonna press the ball joint out into my cup. And then we'll be ready to install the new one. There you go. Now let's line up the new ball joint and you wanna press on the outer part of it. So I have this cup that's gonna allow me to press on the edge, edge of the ball joint and then this adapter piece um, for the press to press up against. Grab the press, line it up in here. And at the top, I need a cup that will receive the ball joint. So make sure everything is lined up. You don't want this to go in crooked or anything. Now that everything is lined up, this rod will push the ball joint in and uh, we'll basically squeeze it into the control arm. So let's go ahead and tighten. All right, as you can see, that has bottomed out. So let's release the tool. Okay, now with the press off, remove all of your adapters. As you can see, the ball joint is perfectly flush up against the control arm. If there's any space in there, or if you can see the rest of the ball joint, that means it's not pressed on all the way and you need to keep going. Another indicator is this groove here. That's where the snap ring goes. And if you can't see that, you need to keep going so you can install the snap ring and lock this in. Your new ball joint should have come with a new snap ring. So grab your snap ring pliers, open it up and guide it down. Make sure it doesn't pinch your fingers. There we go, it's locked in. You can. You can give it a couple taps to make sure that it's sitting in its groove, which it is. Now we can take the boot and let's press the boot on. Make sure it slides all the way down and locks in. I'm gonna slide it in all the way and then twist it. And I'm gonna have to kind of spin, spin this bushing down a little bit just so I can get it into the front part here. Okay, there we go, that's in. You can use a rubber mallet and just drive it in the rest of the way. Be careful not to damage your ball joint. Let's get the bolt in. Now that this one's started, let's start the two rear bolts. Push this in a little bit to line it up. Now that this is almost lined up, I'm gonna take a little pry bar, just pry this bushing out a little bit. And now I can insert my bolts. I'm just gonna do a little bit of prying here in order to line these up. Now let's torque them. All right, 110 foot pounds for both of these. I cleaned out the debris that was inside this uh, hole in the knuckle. Now you can take the new ball joint, line it up with the hole, and let's press it in. You can use a rubber mallet to press it up, but make sure you don't hit on the center of the ball joint. That's gonna ruin the ball joint. So I'm just gonna bonk on the control arm. Drive it in all the way until that slot in the ball joint lines up with this hole. That way we can put the bolt in. Now take your pinch bolt and I put some anti-seize on it. That way it doesn't seize up in the knuckle in the future. Drive it through all the way. If you can't drive it through, that means the ball joint is either too high or too low. Let's install the nut on the other side. Let's snug this up and torque it to 46 foot-pounds. Can use an 18 millimeter socket and a wrench on the other side to hold the nut. 46 foot-pounds, perfect. Now I'm gonna take a pull jack. If you're on the floor, you can just use the floor jack. I'm gonna raise the control arm up to simulate ride height. And the reason I wanna do that is to torque the inner bushing, because if you torque it when the control arm's sitting low like this, it's gonna put tension on it when it's at ride height and it'll wear prematurely. Now let's snug up this bolt. And let's torque it to 110 foot-pounds. Start on all five of your lug nuts, snug them up, and then torque them to 83 foot-pounds.